Hey, uh, Pippi? Pippi, where are we? Ah, the Far Realm. Pippi, get the book. What does it have to say about the Far Realm? The Far Realms, a place outside the multiverse, beyond existence, beyond time, and beyond space. An unknowable place where titanic beasts shape and change reality at a whim. A place where aberrations call home, and the ones you know, the Beholder, Mind Flayer, and Ablith, are ants. They're able to seep through to the material plane. Welcome to the Far Realm, a Lovecraftian plane of existence that came along relatively late in the D&D cosmology. First appearing in the 1996 2 adventure The Gates of Firestorm Peak by Bruce Cordell. In this adventure, Elder Elves create a portal to explore new worlds. Using a comet called Dragon's Tear, they connect directly with an alternate reality. Unfortunately for them, they connected to the Far Realm, and their empire would soon disappear in a bloody horror as apparitions seemingly annihilated them. And thus, the Far Realm was born, where creatures like the Mind Flayer were retroactively said to be from there, or at least created by the influences of the Far Realm. And when the Far Realm seeps into the world, or the Prime Material Plane, things start to get weird. The land changes, matter warps, and beings become terrible monstrosities. Eyes and tentacles may suddenly sprout, or cancerous growths may transform a person into a nearly unrecognizable visage of their former self, and an aberration is born. So, what exactly is the Far Realm? Well, this is a place beyond the other planes, where even the Astral Sea ends. Time doesn't exist here. Though events can pass from A to B, matter is morphic and reality is amoebic. There is no law or chaos, nor good or evil. Minds that peer into the Far Realm do not do so unscathed, as it is impossible for the mortal mind to comprehend what is seen. And unlike the rest of the cosmology, that typically consists of a single plane, such as the plane of fire or the plane of shadow, the Far Realm consists of smaller planes that exist upon smaller planes. It's described as akin to sheets of parchment placed upon one another. Some may be as small as a demiplane, while others can be as large as the prime. These planes are infinitely warped and constantly changed by the titanic and unknowable creatures that reside there. These entities are so alien and so illogical that reality warps around them. They create lethal contradictions and toxic natural laws that emerge and disappear on a whim. Some of these entities are so large they exist in multiple planes at once or approach the power of deities. Clear as mud? Great! Because knowing the unknowable would kind of defeat the point, and this is obviously the space in D&D for Cthulhu and Eldritch Horrors from Lovecraftian fiction. The intrigue of the Far Realm is how it could affect your campaign world. And how could it do so? Well, let's talk about a few ways. And the first few might already be in your game. How about the subclasses your players choose? The Far Realm is specifically mentioned in the Aberrant Mind and Wild Magic Sorcerer subclasses, where the reason a character has those powers is from contact with the Far Realm. And psionic powers have a lot of links with the Far Realm, so you may include the Soul Knife Rogue or Psy Warrior Fighter in subclasses that have links with the Far Realm. And the Far Realm Shard in the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything for those aforementioned sorcerers is a crystal seeped in the Far Realm essence and as such has sprouted eyes and tentacles. And how might this affect your players? And of course, the Great Old One Warlock, where the Warlock character makes a pact with an entity from the Far Realm. And how about other creatures, like the Amethyst Dragon? Amethyst Dragon specifically despise the Far Realm and its corrupting touch. Make one an ally or an enemy seeking to rid the world of your psionically touched players. Adventures are always improved with dragons. Or how about your BBEG? The classic example of BBEG is a Lich. But how about making your Lich an Eldritch Lich? which is found in the Monsters Compendium Volume 1 from D&D Beyond. Or any number of aberrations that might want to access the Far Realm. I could see an abolith infused with hubris that thinks if they open the realm of the Far Realm, they'll have some sort of power there. It'd be terribly, terribly wrong. And your players must stop them. Or how about the classic Elder Evils? These bad boys, if you don't know, border on gods and have extremely evocative names like the Night Serpent, the Hunger Below, the Worm That Walks, and while well, these, save them for another video. But if you're looking for pre-made official adventures that have some sort of link to the Far Realm that you could spin off into a Far Realm adventure, there's Tales from the Yawning Portal 
where within the Doom Vault is a section called the Far Realm Sits that has been warped and influenced by the Far Realm. And in Radiant Citadel, there's a 14th level adventure, Orchids of the Invisible Mountain, where adventurers need to travel to both the Feywild and the Far Realm. And that's what we've got. Short video, not much to go on the history and traits of the Far Realm. A footnote is that it does feature in Fandelver and Below, a recent adventure that came out, um, which I did not know while writing or recording this, so that is something that we can cover in the future and how it touches on the Far Realm. Otherwise, thanks for watching, like, follow, and subscribe, all that jazz, and I will see you next time.